How can we use one of the most iconic works of art to help us produce music? Michelangelo's David is one of the most well-known and highly respected works of art in human history. And when asked how he created such a masterpiece, Michelangelo replied, The sculpture was already within the block of marble when I started the work. I just chipped away at everything that wasn't David. I imagine that's how he said it anyway. But how can we use that approach to making music, making the process easier, quicker, more enjoyable, and ending up with a better result? Well, today I'm gonna to try and uncover those secrets. First, we're gonna apply this technique on a micro level, helping us with composition, and then on a macro level to help us with arrangement. Now, of course, the major difference between sculpting and music making is that a sculptor starts with a block of marble, whereas as musicians, we have to create that block first before we can start chipping away. But we can still use the premise as You'll see in a minute. Okay, so let's start with the drums. We've got four different drum sounds here. We've got a kick, a closed hat, an open hat, and a main clap or snare. And what we're gonna do is just duplicate them onto every 16th of this bar, and this is our block. Now I choose a 16th because that's where all the fun happens when it comes to groove. So you can think of that like your kind of chisel size. It's our resolution that we're gonna be working in. So at the moment, this sounds like an absolute horror. But all we need to do using this Michelangelo technique is whistle away everything that isn't the drums that we want. But how do we know what to chip away, when and why? Well, this is where we can use a reference track for guidance. And again, think of Michelangelo. He had a model to base his creation on. A real bloke, a reference. If he didn't, he'd just start chipping away randomly and he wouldn't know what he was actually working towards. Now, even if he didn't use a model and he did it entirely from his memory, which I doubt, he'd studied enough references and human forms throughout his life to be able to do that. The references were baked into his brain. Either way, it didn't come from nothing. So if you've already listened to and studied a lot of music, maybe you don't need a reference track but if you haven't then you will okay so let's start chipping away and if we mute everything by selecting it all and pressing zero then we can just activate the sounds that we want kind of like in an old drum machine in house music that would be super simple it would just be the kick on every beat a clap or snare on every other kick an open hat in between every kick but we want to create something a bit more interesting today and remember you can use your reference track if you want guidance as to where those drums could fall I quite like this. Now the clap. Now you can actually do that with drum loops as well. Quite often people will bring in a drum loop and they just leave it as it is. So if we listen to this little loop we got from a sample pack here. We've already got snares and kicks in our loop, so it's just gonna clash. It's too much, right? But we can use the same Michelangelo way of thinking to just carve out everything that isn't what we need. So I'm just gonna take out the kick drums. I'm gonna take out the snare drum. I'm gonna take out that kick drum because we don't have a kick there, so it's gonna clash with our rhythm. So I'm just gonna do that on every other eighth. And in fact, let's just kind of copy and duplicate that now because we've already done that. And then listen to our loop. On its own, it's gonna sound really weird. Like, what does that even mean? But when we have it with our drum loop, it's just gonna fill in the gaps because we've carved out what wasn't needed. And now we've got pretty funky little groove going on. So let's do exactly the same thing with the bass line. I'm gonna write this key in A sharp minor. So I'm just gonna put an A sharp note on every single 16th, and then we can hear what it sounds like with the beats. A bit too much, so we just want to take out some of these bass notes and whittle out and carve the space that we want. And notice how all the fun happens just before the beats when you're using these 16ths. That's really getting the groove and the syncopation going. That's cool. And let's put it back there.
Nice, real leather groove there. Now at this point we can just hit the scale button, choose the scale that we're working in, and then start moving around some of those different notes. Now you could apply the Michelangelo technique to the actual pitches as well, by filling them all up and then just chipping away, but that would take a really long time and now we've got scale features in DAWs, is it even worth it? It would be the equivalent of picking a marble block that was 10 times the size that David was going to end up, just to have to chip away all that excess, i.e. kind of a waste of time. So let's choose A sharp minor. And then if we hit scale, you can see that we've got rid of all the notes that don't fall within that scale. So let's just start moving these up and down. That's cool. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing with the melody. So I'm just going to draw in a note on every 16th. And let's listen to it at the moment. And we get our chisel out and we are just going to try and make it into play with some of these other sounds here. I'm going to change this grid to be 16th so we can really see what's going on as well. And now let's go back to that melody and just start taking out some of these notes. But we're going to have it into play a bit with the bass line. And exactly the same thing, we can hit the scale button and just start moving those up and down. And if it starts to get a bit repetitive, it's fine. We can zoom out a little bit and we can just now make our loop a little bit longer and we can just make a little variation every now and again if we want to switch things up. So let's just take out the second note of that bass line and then duplicate that and let's tweak that melody a bit. Now we have this. Very cool, and now let's just jam some chords over the top of that. Nice! Okay, so we've used this Michelangelo technique to create the loop on the micro, but now we're gonna take it out to the macro and we're gonna use it to help us with arrangement because I know from experience that arrangement is one of the trickiest things that people struggle with with music production. So here's how you do it. So we've brought a reference track into an audio channel within our project. I've made sure that it is synced correctly and that is because if it's synced to our project, we can visually see where the different parts of this reference track are occurring. So next thing we need to do is duplicate our loop and this is now our marble block this entire structure is our marble block now we need to chip away what's not our track until we're left out with our track and this is where we can use the reference track and add markers by listening to it and determining what's happening at which point so at the beginning we've got a bit of bass and we've got the top of the kick drum and then at this point We've got the full bass comes in with a big kick and then some of the hats come in. And you can do that throughout this track and just make little notes. So here we can hear that's a drop. So I'm just going to right click up here, add locator and put drop. Here we can even see it's gonna be the break. So we can add a locator there and put break. And once you've done that, we can then use that as a reference to take out elements from our track and very quickly come up with a structure that's gonna work for our genre. So at the beginning, for example, we can hear it's just a kick. So we might go into our loop for this part. Let's just go in there, take out everything apart from our kick and then filter out the low end of the kick as it does in the reference track. So we just put an EQ after it. And then we can automate that high end to just pop through for that first part. And then automate that full frequency to come in there with the other drums. And similarly, we might do that with the bass. So we might start the track like this. And 
then bring in kick there and then perhaps the other drums come in here or oh, the hi-hats come in there so let's just copy our drums over again loop them and then we are just going to delete all of the drums that aren't the kick and the hi-hat so at that point of the track that's when that comes in and then at this point everything comes in and we might even put the chords in here depending on what our reference track is doing And then at this point it's the break, so we take our drums out there, we probably take our bass out there as well, and then just have the chords and the melody. Now of course you've got total artistic license, and you don't need to make it identical to the structure of your reference track if it's not going to work for your idea, but at least it's a starting point to help you get going. Now at this point you've got a pretty good shape of your track, the idea is there, the proportions are there, and the structure is there too. After that it's a case of polishing up the fine details until you've got a finished work of art. Now of course Sculpting these details takes time and practice, but there are certain techniques you can use to reduce the time it takes. And it really comes down to focusing on the most important skills first, like how to sculpt an eye, or how to get the arms proportioned properly, or in Michelangelo's case, how to sculpt a couple of balls. But either way, it's best to start with the most important elements first. Now in music, one of the most important elements usually will be the melody. That's what carries the tune, that's what gets people's juices flowing, and it's what we want people to remember and be singing all day long. So I've put together three simple rules for sculpting catchy, memorable melodies that will instantly enhance your music. You can watch it here, but before you do, if you enjoyed this video, do let me know in the comments below which of these techniques have you found most useful. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to my channel for music production tips each and every week. Thank you so much for watching guys, and I will catch you over at that next video.